who dies at Christmas, who is the Christmas 2023 EastEnders flash forward victim, all of the questions that people have been asking the entire year since February when it was initially announced. And once again, we're back. It's been a couple months since our previous video where we went ahead and predicted who we thought was going to die at Christmas, but we thought it'd be fun to go through, do it about 20 days from the time. It was probably going to be released like at the start of December, but we've been a bit busy, so it's now going to get released now, about 20 days before the actual event, as uh, I think there'll also be one more just before Christmas, just to kind of lock in the theory. And so if we get it wrong, people can be like, ha ha, you're a fucking idiot. I'm like, ah. Oh. They, yeah, the, but at least we didn't show, mention the, the fucking... The show told me. Um, okay, my quick guess, my body on the floor is uh, Kevin the Carrot. Ah, oh, it's still garbage. It's still a absolute loser. Um, so yeah. You can get uh, a talk to Kevin the Carrot. Yeah, I know. But yeah, we're here to discuss who is going to be the dead body on Fort Christmas. The way we did it last time, and I think people enjoyed it, where we had a fairly succinct but constant back and forth in between, where we're going to offer three of our main suggestions as to who dies. But it's not just going to be literally everybody who's possibly a victim. It's it's going to go into a tier of like, of like, like very unlikely, then like mid, and then like top tier. That's generally how we do these videos. So, of course, you'll have to wait a little bit till you actually get as to who we think will die on the body at the floor at Christmas. There we are. That's the format. Fucking nailed that one. First take and all. Um, before we start this, I'm Ash. I'm joined by Piggy. Hello, yeah. my fellow watchers and enjoyers. How do you do, my fellow watchers and enjoyers? Um, I'm talking like how you greet God. But God has to talk to me. He's like, hello, my son. How are you doing, my son? <laughs> I don't know why. And, um, uh, but yeah. yeah we, I, I, all we, I was we are watching was Watford. Simple, this is... Yes. Yes. Yes, I am Piggy. God, do it. Do it right now. Yes, I am Piggy. And these are going to be our three main picks for the dead bodies on the floor at Christmas. There we are. It's all I wanted, Piggy. It's all I wanted. <laughs> Sound. Nailed it. There we are. As always, with these, we're going to start in the low tier. So, do you want to start it off, Piggy, with your, like, first, like, low tier Bonnie on the floor at Christmas? So, like, very unlikely. Yes. Ooh. But, like, well, it's still, still slightly plausible, but not, like, I don't know. I, I suppose of my, mine, for example, is Ian Beale. That's my, like, low tier, where he's not really been in a conversation, but you do see a lot of people talking about it online. Well, obviously, people, just because that I don't think, I don't, honestly don't think a lot of people have seen who Ian is. Like, I don't think they've actually seen who Ian is as a character and haven't really watched a lot of him over the years. Because people are surprised at how much of a weasel he is. And it's like, that's the whole fucking point of the characters, boys. Ian at heart is a selfish little rat. And that's what he does. Bitch. He continually... Oh, and that's exactly why Cindy is so perfect, because she's an absolute bitch. So, like, you have the rat and you have the bitch. It's great. It's a great combination. Why do people think he's going to be a body on the floor at Christmas? Well, he isn't exactly shy of making enemies. He does keep continually just fucking annoying people. He's getting involved in everything. He's involved with Dean now. He's involved with Rocky. He's involved with Kathy. You know, he probably not made any big fans of uh, Linda. He may be friends now with Sharon, but that could easily explode closer to the time. Um, Suki, obviously, they have that failed business empire that they could have launched, but they never did. And Denise, well... Everybody remembers that embarrassing bunk up that Ian and Denise had for a while and they were together and Ian was never fully committed because he missed Jane. Good times. Good time. <laughs> so that's my lower tier. Obviously, there are a bunch of other names, um, but Piggy, you're offering. 
Well, first, if I can dissect the Ian, if you don't mind me dissecting yeah, go ahead. the frog known as Ian Beale. Um, so we're going to cut him open. We're going to dissect him and check to see if he is the body. The, the China, right, now you have to look at this as a business perspective. I understand we're talking about a show that is fictional with fictional characters, but these people are actors and actresses. You don't go up to uh, Adam Woodyak, who's been a legacy character since the beginning of the show. He only left yes. for really two years. Well, like two years, You yeah. don't go up to a legacy character and go, right, we're bringing you in in June. We're going to reveal you in June that you're in France with Cindy. It's going to be lovely. The family's there. And then we're going to bring you in in August. And then you're going to die at Christmas. I mean, they Adam's also, they also like... sweetened it with them saying, look, we'll, br- we'll bring Cindy back. Because they seem they had a pretty... Pretty good working relationship. Always had fun working together. You know, like it's seemingly it was a part of the part of the deal, right? To get Ian back, you bring back Cindy, because they worked together for years. Um, because it's um, you wouldn't just go, okay, oh yeah, so I'm coming back in June, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I'm fully coming back in August, yeah. So what's the last bit you said? You die at Christmas. <laughs> think that you die at Christmas. Ah, uh, you see, no. <laughs> That's how I imagine it. Like, if they even went, you're dying at Christmas, he would have instantly shot it down. I'm not saying he has an ego, but if you're bringing in Ian Beale, you're not fucking having him die yet. You're, you're building to that, because he's yeah. a big character. Although we say that, and the biggest character of them all, Dot, Dot Branning, did not get a fucking send-off, a proper send-off, a proper death. Yeah. But that's, a, that's an example, because she got too old. Um, but yeah, Ian being Ian, Ian Beale being the body on the floor, that's a that's a tongue twister. Ian Beale being the body body on the floor, uh, just don't see it happening. It's um, it's not possible to me personally. We, yeah, this is coming out in a week about. Uh, not your answer. Hmm? It is coming out in five to a week's time, five to seven days time, and so we're obviously seeing the Christmas build. Ian is involved, but he's not the centre focus, if that makes sense. He's not he's not the centre stage. Because even though he is Kathy's son, and you could link them too, he's not um he's not involved with Kathy he's he's involved, but he's not the centre focus, the centre point. So I don't see it being Ian, simply because you can't just bring in Adam and kill him straight away. You can't just do that. You have to build to it. It has to be a big, monumentous... It's like if you bring in... It's like if um, Steve McFadden left for three years and then you bring him back. It's like, yeah, we're going to kill you off straight away. He's, uh, he's not going to be like, all right, I'll do that. He's, he's not. He's going to be like, what the, what the fuck are you doing, lads? So, yeah, that's my thing. Because all the six women have to have a man that they don't dislike, that they dislike, that has hurt them. And Ian hasn't hurt... Uh, Kathy, all he's done is slapped her on the wrist and went, get the fuck out of my house. That's all he's done. He hasn't been like, I set the cafe on fire. I burnt her. I, brun- I burnt my brother alive. Fuck you. So, yeah, that's my personal take on it. Sorry yeah, for the I rant. suppose just, no, no, this was what these videos are for. Um, yeah, it's why it's my low tier, because I've seen a lot of people want it to happen, simply because I don't think people realize that this is who Ian is. Um, it's definitely, it's, but it's why it's in my lower tier, because to me it's very implausible. Like, I don't see it really happening. Um, but a lot of people do just generally want him dead, so they don't have to deal with him anymore. Which is kind of a surprise, considering everything he's done for the show, and the fact that they've kind of re-established the Beale family, along with the Knights, which is kind of the, like, Beale Fowler clan at this point. And they're gonna get united, and they're all gonna look out for one another eventually through a bit more time and that's what's going to be i feel like that's what they're building to the the show has decided that they want the the key strong families to be at the core of the show that's why there'll be more brannings on the show very soon that's why they brought back ian and cindy and now have the knights now they're some connected family and it's why i'd imagine there'll be a couple more mitchells on the way at some point soon just to kind of prop up the numbers and re-establish the big families like, you know, they used to. Um, because I suppose the um, one thing I find funny, and it's on a segue, so if you want to talk about the bit I just mentioned, or are you 
got ID Raven. Um, because everyone, I know this is going to be a reference to a video that's already out, but everybody needs good neighbors and family members. And the problem is, um, if you don't have any family, then you can't really be part of the show. That's why Jay, even though he doesn't have family, he has the Mitchell, yeah, he has the the, the Brown, um. You know what I mean? They so, like, everyone exist. needs a family. <laughs> they don't exist. What? They, they don't Oh, exist. I thought the Browns were fucking honey and... No, no, they're all and... Mitchells. They're all Mitchell. Oh, oh, right. Jay he did get sticky with honey, much... though. He did, but that he didn't. she didn't take his name. But yeah, no, it's just the uh-huh. Mitchells. She just extended the Mitchells. But since he's not technically related by blood, they do just drop him whenever they want him to be gone. So, yeah. But yeah, everybody's tied to a family. Um, yeah, one thing I did laugh at, and I saw this theory the other day, is people are the people are some people genuinely pitched. What if nobody actually gets killed on Christmas? It's just that Ian sees something horrific and has a heart attack <laughs> and dies on the floor. <laughs> like, imagine how anticlimactic that would be. It <laughs> just Ian oh, just my, has so, a heart so basi- attack. So basically, so basically, <laughs> all right, I'll picture it then. So I'll try and set the scene. So you have Phil, um, Phil, fucking George, and the six women, and Dean's after just punching, um, Linda upstairs, giving her a busted lip, and then Linda has hit her on hit Dean on top of the head with a champagne bottle. We assume. Um, so, so Ian walks down the stairs, then Ian walks into the kitchen, he walks into the pub, and he goes, oh, 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 <laughs> that would be so fucking funny, just imagine that, he's been building it since February, it's like, someone's gonna die, someone's gonna die, Ian Beale, hard yeah, on the floor. Like, imagine that. To me, no one's gonna get this flash, to me it'd be the most WC fucking W thing I've ever seen, if they pull that out of the bag, like, was... you want this, you want this big match to happen? We're gonna fucking swerve you, boys. Nothing yeah, happens. It's just it's it would be absolutely terrible for the show, <laughs> and that's why it's in my lower tier. It was just a funny little thread to kind of go into. What's your what's your lower tier? Who's um, your main Jack suspect? Branning. Lower tier, really? Yeah, I he he he. I he's a personally, roadblock. I'd put him kind of. Well, I'd put him a bit higher personally, but that's just me. I just don't see it. He's a he, he's a nice guy at the moment. He he's doing nothing wrong. Yes, he's going to have a sleep up with Stacey, he's but they're only going to touch hands, and he's only going to touch hands with her and kiss her. It's not that much. Um, yeah, but remember how yeah. much shit he put Denise through over the last year. Yeah, yeah, but we all do it. So Jack will basically basically won't be the I body like of the uh... I don't see it. I just feel like there are much other like lower. I, I'd even, I even say Rocky's less of a. I'd say Rocky's in the lower tier personally. Well, I was going to run through some of my other lower tier picks. Yeah. So, um, so obviously we have Jack, but I just don't see it because you're bringing back Penny, and and Lauren. So what's the point of bringing back Penny, the daughter of Jack, when Jack dies? I understand you could have the whole. Who done it with Penny? But I'm gonna be honest, and I don't want anyone to take offence by this. But who's seriously clamming for? Oh my God, Penny as a detective. Let, let's be honest. Who the fuck is clamming for that? I don't yeah, gonna easily say there's entertainment. There's a couple work, people. There's a couple of people. Like uh, yeah, but, but in the majority, the majority of people do not give a shit about Penny Brannon. Like, surely coming back being a detective. Sure, I take it. It's surely. She has a Twitter account dedicated to her pussy. Um, I take it. I take it. But Penny fucking Brandon being the fucking I sp- Sherlock I Holmes. I the interesting one here is, I'm just now wondering what's going to be your, your mid-tier. So, yeah. Um, carry on, carry on. Uh, so, obviously, Rocky would be another example, as you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Because Rocky is... Rocky, well, no, actually, I'm actually going to move Rocky. I'm going to put two other people here that are involved in the Queen Vic, I assume, on Christmas Day. 
Now, okay. now I know this is technically cheating because we know they survive the Christmas Day accident. But Phil Mitchell and George Knight don't see it happening, lads. Yeah, don't, people you're, have you're been not suggesting you're... the Phil Steve... a lot in this last year, and I don't really get it. I think they just they just look. Ash, I get if Ash, you're Ash, Ash. Look, you don't understand the meaning behind it. It's because he has Panto to do. That's why they kill him off. <laughs> That's clearly the reason they kill him well, off. He has Panto to do. It's Phil Mitchell. He is the lifeblood of the fucking show. Yes. All right. Phil's not the best character he's been in years. The Phil Mitchell character is a fucking sh criminal shame as to how one note the character has gotten in recent years. Because there's simply, <laughs> there's no fucking, there's no vulnerability. There's no sadness with Phil anymore. You never really get that depth they used to show. All right. Where's Phil crying? Because all the woman he gets with think they want Phil, but they don't want Phil and they want to change him, but obviously Phil doesn't change. Then he's stuck in a continual loop of people who want to change him, realise he's not changing, and then they just fucking leave him, leave him to fester by himself. You know? Like, the amount of stuff that you could do with the character in terms of, you know, like, hey, let's say, the current angle for Phil, why is Phil possibly a, a suspect? Well, he slept with Emma behind Cat's back, and he has basically fathered Sharon's child, and Sharon and Kat may be on talking terms, but they're not exactly fucking friends, you know. And that's kind of where a lot of the issues come from. There's been a lot of like long-standing issues with a lot of the Slaters. He's not really helped them out that often, you know. Kathy and him have history. Suki and uh, like Nish, they all have a bit of a um kind of back and forth like phil was angry at suki for basically letting ben overdose um like you know there are the precedents for why he would have wronged all the women but if we simply put it in the context that phil's going to discover that he has a son at christmas and probably get back with sharon and they're going to raise another fucking generation of the mitchells like ah oh. you know this storyline with alby and him being the dad is a it's going to be a way to redeem the Phil Mitchell character and at least show that he's got a bit more depth that he used to have rather than the rather than the the, the very shallow Phil Mitchell that we get now. Wow, it's very low. What? What? So, oh, sat Phil, come on. You used to actually talk. Now you just grunt. It's, it's because, from what I've heard from you, it's because Steve doesn't want to... Because McFadden doesn't want to fucking do all the stunts. Like, yeah, sure, he'll do the stunts, but he doesn't want to be Phil Mitchell from, from 30 what years we, ago. From what again, I read, essentially, he wants to kind of have a bit more of a, of a back role, which is fine. Yeah. But, like, you know, you're telling me that doesn't mean you just keep giving him shit. <laughs> like, you still give him good stuff to work with. Just don't make it a massive part every week. You know, that's... That's how I do it personally. <laughs> like he doesn't yeah. need to be crying um, every week. He doesn't need to be fighting people every week. But allow him to have the serious scenes that he never has any. True, true. But it also does just depend on what McFadden wants to do. Yeah, let's be honest. Because I'd assume he has a lot of leeway with what to do with the character. Yeah, um, of course. Um, but but yeah, also again George Knight. I don't know. I don't know who suggested George Knight dies at Christmas. I but it's definitely not George Knight. I think people just think it, that since since he's a, a higher profile actor, you know, don't believe he'll actually be. I don't don't think he'll actually be in it for the long run. Think he'll have a good year or two, but otherwise, kind of be done. Be there to set up the future family of the knights, and then fuck off. Yeah, but it's not George because George's son is coming back, and you just wouldn't kill off George to bring his son back. You um, brought you you've yeah. you've spent a lot of this year building up George to be one of the good men, right? You know, like if they were going to do it, he probably would have had an affair with Cindy again. He probably would have, you know, just lied about hitting Dean down the stairs. 
But throughout this year, he's kind of, he's been angled as the good man, who is always like there for the people around him and the woman around him, and it wouldn't really fit into the mold. If 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 they wanted to kill him, they would have played more into the Elaine doesn't know he's violent, but you know, like we had the stories when he was brought in, like oh yeah, I had him beaten to an inch of his life, you know. Like I'd imagine they would have played up that aspect a bit more. But simply saying, yeah, it's very unlikely that George is there. But uh, I think it's time we move on to our likely. Team. I suppose I hmm. kind of want to get. Honestly, uh, I think I uh, since since you you had three of each, I think I could probably offer at least two more unlikely, but we could probably play with a theming. Um, poor boy. Jesus. Um, body on the floor. Eh, nah, fuck it. <laughs> Let's go to likely. I thought I had some actual other options. There obviously are there, but not any that stick out so dramatically. So yeah, there we are. The the mid tier, the most the the likely two tier. Oh, uh, Rocky. Rocky's up. Um, obviously. From what we've seen, Cathy finds out at the time of recording this on the the week eleven of December. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, uh, the eleventh of December that week. Yeah. About the fire. Um. So he's likely a suspect, even though I suspect he's leaving then next week. But he could stay for for a little while until after Christmas and then leave. Um, but he is wronging Kathy, and Kathy is a mainstay, so yeah. he could just basically end up fucking up the other women. He technically has because he somehow, well, he hasn't really touched the other women, but he, you know, he doesn't have to really. Yeah, it's um, Rocky's mostly just there because of what he has done, but a lot of his stuff has been very self-contained. Um, like, he has affected Kathy, and that's pretty much it. Um, it's why he is mid-tier, simply because he is leaving. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think he leaves very shortly after Christmas Day, if he even makes it there, which I wouldn't be surprised if he gets snubbed the Christmas Day, with how seemingly sudden the exit was. Like, it came across as very, like... Oh, the Soap Awards. Yeah, I'm fucking leaving, guys. See ya. It's like... I don't know, lads. It, is, it came together very... Uh, suddenly. And, yeah, it's mostly just the actions that he's done to Kathy, setting the British Cafe on fire. He's obviously nearly killed Peter, injured Bobby, and didn't even get the money that he needs. Now he's going to continue to wrong Kathy sooner by making her sign over the cafe to Nish. Like, it's just, it's angling for other people to be there in his place. He's just kind of a guy who's down on his luck and is causing more problems. But yeah, that's why he's like mid-tier, because I no one's believing Rocky is the number one suspect. Um, But it's plausible that in some way, you know, maybe he has a fucking heart attack or something, you know? Maybe he does the old Derek Brannon where everybody's just sick of him and he just has a heart attack. But you never know. I would love that. I'd love because having watched Christmas twenty twelve with you, um, seeing the Derek Branning exit, it's honestly great to me. Like where he's like, oh, all you women are this. He doesn't do the Alfie Moon. I don't mind no, doing the no. Alfie Moon. Well, he yeah, just it's like, like oh, he, he, Derek he, Branning, and then he just he finds himself thrown out by his siblings. You know the brothers he swears he wants respect from in front of his kids, and in front of the woman who he probably did love in her own way. He was just kind of, he felt like lucky to have even had someone in his life like Kat. Um, but ultimately he was kind of scamming and conning his way through everything, and obviously has the heart attack at the end of the episode. And they think he's faking it, because that's something that he would do. Um, yeah. Um, I do. I don't know why I keep confusing him for the Alfie Moon. You spider women are all the same. Ah! <laughs> I don't know why I keep confusing it. 
But that is um if if we were doing this in twenty nineteen, Alfie would have been a suspect to me. Yeah, <laughs> of course. He would have been he would have been the body on the floor. Oh, um, but my other two are Ravi is not my Ravi is another one for me. Mm-hmm. Ravi Gelato Galato. Um Ravi Galati. Oh Ravi Galati. Um he is a suspect. He is um he recently has kidnapped and sent Eve away. Yes. Um, well I wouldn't say kidnapped. He's more or less just made Eve run on run on the loose. Um I mean he did, so, yeah. he did kidnap her. And basically threatened her. But he didn't kill her. He, for, he forced her out of Walford, essentially. Like wait, 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 wait. But well, hold on. It's Theo who's apparently done it. Yeah, okay. So, there you go. Okay. There you go. According 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 to Stacy, Theo done it. So hypothetically speaking, Ravi's off Scott. But when they find out that Ravi has done it, uh the shit will hit the pan on probably Christmas Day. But I'm expecting we're <laughs> gonna get that shit down at the at the table where they're all sitting down and then Nish reveals that Chucky's a lesbian. Yeah. And Finney's like, yeah, hey, Pa. Yeah, Pa, what's wrong with that, Pap? I don't know why he's southern. Yeah, Pa, what's wrong with that, Pop? Hand me the mashed taters. Focus. But yeah, um, yeah, that, that's personally what I see. Ravi, Ravi will not be, he, he will likely be a body, but he's not that likely. Yeah. He's in the middle. I do, I do somewhat agree. He does kind of earn the middle tier. Um, as said in a lot of the recent coverage we've done, Ravi is angled more of an anti-hero than he is a villain. Um, like he does the morally questionable things, but you can tell that, like, morally, he believes everything he's doing is good even if he's not necessarily proud of it. Like, Ravi, the way I'd, the way I'd describe Ravi is he's morally grey where he simply wants to be able to provide for his family, but he's come from nothing, so everything he's had to scrounge for is not rarely ever been above board. So he's kind of like that like scoundrel where it's like, yeah, sure, he's still living, but he's, he's living by like taking fucking bounties off, right? Like, he is trying to make the best with the tools he has been given. Like, but fundamentally, he's not a bad person. He's just being put into bad positions constantly. Um, And I think that's why... That's why Nish is still ramping up to be in that upper tier. As, you know, he's used Raffi going... Ah, oh, hey, Ravi, I nearly killed Eve, lol. Uh, you need to dispose of her because I'm unlicensed. And Ravi goes, yeah, I'm unlicensed too. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're my best boy and I love you and you're great and you're the best. I can't trust anyone but you. You are my boy. <laughs> like, it's kind of, it's angled for the way Ravi gets redeemed in a lot of people's eyes is obviously when he stands up to Nish. And probably like fights back against kind of he will fight he'll fight against doing what Nish just tells him to and will like take it take a hold over him rather than just being like a little uh, like a little puppy who's happy to have attention. Um and the last one for my mid tier is well this will either like people or this will separate the men from the boys. Or the the perverts from the stalkers, and um, it is good old Mister Theo Hawthorne. Yeah, good old Horty Thorny. Um, he he's been a little scoundrel uh, yep. as of late. Of course, he's done a little oopsie, as we know. He tried to attempt uh, attempt uh, to rape Stacy. Little oopsie, and um, he broke into her house. He fucking he met fake profile of all of Stacy's family friends and um, like who could forget Bradley Brandon's Facebook page. Um so yeah, Theo is in my mid tier. 
it would be anticlimactic, I think, just because he's only been introduced for not even a year. It's only been about 10, it's 12 like, months. It's, it's barely been... It's, he was probably introduced in like March, April-ish time, and it kind of yeah. slowly built like halfway through the year. But, yeah, in the same vein, he has only been here for Stacey. Um, like, the closest other woman he's been involved with is Suki, and it would make sense if and it would make sense if he had assaulted Stacy and that had happened that would probably bind all the women against him because the majority of the women have been sexually assaulted in some form um it would it would maybe bind them together to want to destroy Theo but ultimately he is in the mid tier because he simply has just been hovering around Stacy and that's it Obviously, the one thing we're going to have to wait and see is how he's going to get out around Christmas time. Like, if he manages to get out on good behavior or get a suspended sentence or something. Because fundamentally, he, he pled guilty in the court case, so he's now just going to get sentenced. But we haven't seen the sentencing yet, so there's a chance he's going to serve a suspended sentence. He's going to go in at a certain time. But he goes, oh, Stacy, I'm out. We can be together, and then Stacy obviously finds herself a bit wrapped in mess. Probably gets involved, like Jack probably gets involved at this time. But I want I could imagine him going mental when he sees Stacy and Jack together, and it's not him. Um, and then something bad happens. But it is just mid tier because more likely than Ian, <laughs> more likely than Phil. But I just can't imagine him being taken down in this in this manner simply because of how little he's kind of crossed over in this context um all yeah. right so i guess um, we now go to my mid tier yeah you're my free. gonna start it will start off with jack browning i will say piggy put it in the lower i personally have raised it a bit higher simply because jack has kind of slowly crept up into a lot of the conversations in terms of the christmases Obviously, you had Entertainment World's theory talking about Jack being the body on the floor at Christmas with Amy killing him and then suddenly turning into some weird, like, fucking vampire, the masquerade bloodlines version of, like, Teresa and fuck uh, the other Malcolm. Teresa May. Regardless. Completely wrong reference for you there, mate. Somebody will know that oh. out there. Um, Jeanette, there we are. Like, these crazy vampires who are just kind of. They're the same person, but in this world, the, those vampires are just mental as fuck. Like, their brain's just fully gone. Um, and they're, they're two people, but they present... They're, they're one person, but present as two different people. And this weird dynamic would be how Amy would come across, where she would basically be half Ronnie, half Roxy. Um, which, I ha we did enjoy that theory, and if you want to engage with that, we did a reaction video talking about it. It's like an hour 25. It was probably so... It's a very wholesome video, I'd say. We enjoyed that reaction a lot. Um, but, you know, Jack has slowly crept into the conversation simply because you start to see him doing a bit more dodgy stuff. He's lying a lot more to Denise. He is angling for an affair with Stacy, and also is helping out Sam dramatically. There's a chance that all of the women who he's kind of wronged may end up coming back to haunt him. Um, and like it feels like that could now be more of an option. And because of his increased, like, because of him being increased so much in the actual story, then it would make sense if they did something like this, where ultimately Jack isn't that big a character in terms of you know, he's got kids, he's got a legacy, he's got characters that will live on after him. Um, and it would be a big enough character, a big enough legacy character, that would feel like a big deal on a Christmas day. Because whether you've watched, whether you've watched EastEnders in the last year, or whether you've watched it like on and off for the last like 20 years, Jack Branning pretty much will have been there. Um, so it's just a... A way to kill off a fairly big character, but someone who's not necessarily made much difference in the last little time. Um, but yeah. Uh, anything else to say on Jack, Piggy? 
it's Jack Brandon. I just don't see it being possible. You're bringing in a family, they and you're having Jack be killed. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I will say. Obviously, like, they are bringing back Lauren and Penny. Penny, who hasn't been mentioned since like two thousand and seven, um, has only been mentioned last week. That's probably the first time in fucking years. Um, and Lauren coming back, of course, to reestablish the Branning family. And I do just think they do need that big patriarch character. And I do think if they do end up bringing Max back, it will be a criminal shame to not have Jack there as well and kind of reignite this big family clan rather than just being like this little like weird family unit. Like, it would be a criminal shame to have Jack die off in such a way because there is a lot more legwork to use the character for. It's just he's been criminally underused for so long that I guess maybe he's viewed as disposable. But I don't think he is necessarily. I just think that he's just not been given enough time to work with, right? Like, he's not done anything impactful since, like, 2016, pretty much. And that's a lot of time to be on the show and not really have much to do. Um, But it's the angle that, obviously, Jack and Stacy's affair, that's going to happen. You know, maybe there's some crosswires with Sam. Maybe Sam outs him. And then maybe... The uh, entertainment world theory suggests maybe Amy, like, just lashes out at him because of how kind of how much he's not really helped her so much during the year, and that's why they would need to cover it up to have that be a big thing. People suggested that Lily might kill Theo in some way, and that's why they would cover it up as well, because you know her life's already kind of fucked up in her own way, being a teen and being a teenage mum and needing to provide for Charlie. Um, but yeah, it's why I put it in the mid tier um, though. It's not in the top tier for me personally, simply because I just I don't see it happening necessarily, and be- there are just better people to kill off in this instant. Um, speaking on Theo, could I give you Hasted I Christmas, even though he's not featured on the show because I like he's doing strictly. I'm of course talking about Lathan, not money messing. I'm talking about Bobby Brazier, good old big, bu- big bossy Bobby, um, good old Freddie Slater, um, he, he would be the ideal person to kill Theo, yeah. to me personally, because you have the history that he bullied him in school, and yeah. all the men who've wronged us get what they deserve. Yeah. So he wronged big bossy Bobby. <laughs> I don't know. I love that name. Um. He's, he's robbed uh, Freddy, and basically Freddy writes the wrong and kills him, and then they cover it up. But I don't think Freddy's been back at Christmas. Yeah, I think maybe he comes back on Christmas Day or Boxing Day, but you know he's still. I'm pretty sure he's still doing. I don't know if he is doing like the the strictly tour in the early months of next year, but like there's a chance that he's just not back in time. But I do think there's a big chance we do get that big mo, that little mo and Freddy, like they return together. What the fuck just happened, you know? But it could be a good reason to have her come back with a with good reason, rather than her coming back for no reason. Um, who else is in my most likely tier? We've cut. We 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 kind of covered a lot of the names, really, with Ravi, with Theo, with. Jack, I'd still say is a mid rather than lower. Um, and Rocky. Um, oh, is there anyone else who's really that high on the list? Um, I don't think so. I think that just kind of sets us up for the top tier. If you'd like to uh, start with your initial offering. Well, I'm going to go with a jokey one first, if okay. people are all right with that. Yeah, then I'll, you go oh, for the jokey one, course. I'll go for my serious one, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have two jokey ones. So, it's Christmas Day, and people are dying. That wouldn't listen. To quote John Lennon. Um, or a PB by John. Um, but it's Christmas Day. So we're, so we're all sitting down, Christmas Day dinner, and the choir come into the Queen Vic. You know, Sharon's wedding, the choir comes in, Queen Vic, and who... Who's in the Queen Vic with his big tuba? 
good old Reese and Dean okay. starts a fight with the choir. And what okay. does Reese do? Big two band hand, whatever he plays, bosh, kills him instantly. Reese has killed Dean Wicks. To all the men who have wronged us, he wronged <laughs> the choir, so he's killed. For whom the bell tolls, motherfucker. For whom the bell tolls. <laughs> okay. Um, and could you could you imagine that where it's like built for a year around where it's like all the women are going to get revenge? Okay, he comes with his face. He just bashed <laughs> Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's good, good one, good one, mate. Um, um for my actual one, I do just want to get through that first before Picky okay. derails it with more tuba talk. Um, obviously the main suspect for me is Dean Wicks, and that's who. I genuinely believe still at this point is the dead body on the floor at Christmas simply because Dean has come back and instead of trying in any way to redeem himself, he has continually tried to make a big scene out of it all being fictional by Linda, trying to clear his name in any way he possibly can. And he's not exactly been the most fucking patient or passive or good in this manner. He has tried to completely throw it in her face, has a recording of her fucking harrowingly, like, having to lie, saying that everything was consensual and she came after me, and absolutely disgusting things that they, that no woman should ever have to, or no person who's been raped, no victim, should ever have to be made to do. And I don't think they do this they wouldn't go this far in order to just have him not die at Christmas. Like, he has been the most hated person on the show in the last, what, two months since he's been back? Well, he's not done yeah, much, two months. but he's set up enough grassroots to be there. And, you know, he could possibly have a little bit of a future there. But I don't think there's any way he makes it past Christmas. And this obviously sets up the Shirley Carter return to have her be like, where the fuck's Dean at? You guys said he's set up here. And obviously it all set Shirley at odds with Linda and all the women involved in the cover up. And simply saying, obviously, sexual assault is something that unfortunately binds a lot of the woman involved in this storyline. Stacy by Archie. Um... Uh, Kathy with Wilmot Brown. Suki was nearly assaulted by Ranveer. Um, but there's just a lot of very strong depictions. And it was very specifically set up by saying, look, to all the men who have hurt us, we will protect you type deal. Um, and that's why Dean is... Probably the number one suspect for me. There are still some other people who are very likely to die on Christmas. Um, but for my money, Dean is the one who dies at Christmas. Simply because I strongly disbelieve that they would use such harrowing material just for him to be like, just for him to leave. Like, that would just be a bit fucking tasteless. It's a very selfish act that is... Uh, that will completely de that completely destroys lives, and it yeah. has absolutely no place anywhere. I feel like most people, unfortunately, know someone like a very close friend who have been sexually assaulted, and just to see how deeply it can cut and how much trauma it can cause, it's just despicable and should never be happening in any situation. Well, let's let's be honest, there were will always happen no matter what happens people will always get attacked people will always get hurt because society wants you to believe that you can't be yourself you have to be someone else it's just not true and especially sexual assault people um, the, the people who do the sexual assault um, want you to feel vulnerable and not safe and basically Dean has done that for all the women all the women women um, well, not all of them, but most of them. So it would be tasteless to have this dark episode where Linda has to reveal all. Of, no, 
yeah, yeah, it was consensual, even though it wasn't consensual. And basically then it ends with, he's just gone. Bye, Walford. I'll miss you, Walford. Do, 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 do. I do, 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 do. Yeah, it would be like they would. Goodbye in a taxi. It would be like, it would be like torture porn, essentially. It would just, fuck you. Here's the worst thing we can make you do. Beneath, like, beyond the actual act itself. As to how fucking trauma-inducing and how dehumanizing and demeaning it would be. Ah, We just did that for an episode. Lol. You know, that's just not how it's, it's not how it's going to be done, is it? But um, it, it it it's hard to talk about it because I don't want to upset people. Even though I didn't make a joke, I didn't mean to make that joke. But I just thought I'd be a bit humorous. But because whenever we talk about this, I just my mind's instantly like, oh fuck, what do how what do I say? What do I do? Or, you got, you so no matter what reasonable. I say, someone's going to be like. Someone's going to be like, Peggy, what did you say? And I'll be like, oh, guys, I promise. I just said I want salami on my sandwich. Please. But um, yeah, I, um, that's, that's probably why Dean is suspect number one. But there are other suspects, which we may as well get into. Otherwise, um, I'll, I'll bridge it in between. We'll give the kind of the suspect who's crept up there somewhat. And then obviously the other actual number two. The other high, highly likely is actually Keanu, probably. I know that there's... He was my number two. I know there's been some spoilers of pictures of him at, like, a funeral with Lauren. So it uh, immediately puts him, like, very out of the question. But, you know, EastEnders do love to... They do like to sometimes play with, like, the paparazzi and the people who leak spoilers. Like, because when... You know when, obviously, Abby fell off the roof and she died? Well, she was yeah. she was at her own funeral in the filming, just so people are just like, who the fuck died? Because Avi was there as well, so people had no fucking clue. It's great. You know, Sinners does sometimes love to play with that sort of thing, um, and it would just be very funny to see. I, But yeah, Keanu has started to kind of... He started to, like, wheel and deal. He started to deceive people. He started to be a lot more reckless. He started to hurt people around him. And he's got a big overall secret where he stole he stole Phil's money and kidnapped Albie, which obviously deeply affected Sharon. Um, and, you know, he's just kept lying. He's kept hurting the people around him. And I feel like this will all be revealed on Christmas Day that obviously Al, uh, Keanu was behind Albie's kidnapping. And then Sharon will also reveal that, you know... You're not his dad. And that could lead to a very irate confrontation where everything Keanu's been working hard for, everything he's fucking conned and steeled and, like, like smashed into people for was all worth nothing because ultimately he's not even the father to his child, or so he thought. Because, um, I don't know if we're doing a React channel... A react channel? No, a react channel. I don't know if we're doing a react video to the um, Christmas trailer, the six women. Um, We've already seen it. Probably all the not. Um, so, obviously, Linda cleans the floor upstairs. So maybe someone dies upstairs and yeah. someone dies downstairs. But I can't tell you because I, I don't fucking know. I don't work with the BBC. Yeah. Um, but but Keanu will be my number two pick. Um, you're probably wondering who's your number three pick. Right, it is the Giga Chad of the Square. It is Mister. No, you hate him, but you want to fuck him. That's what that this is. I hate you. About. I hate that you make I me want to fuck you. Uh, this God fuck you. Uh, you're so beautiful. Of course, I'm talking about Malcolm. <laughs> no, I'm talking about I'm talking about Nish, but but we all do want to fuck Malcolm. Let's be honest, that mustache. <laughs> yes, it gives you a ride if it's right. Um, obviously, um, Nish, terrible human being, domestic violence. Um, a lot of implied, um, Im- implied assault. Really, um, has had a grasp over Sookie's life. 
ever since he came out of jail. Everything Suki worked hard to build, Nish took right out from under her, you know, and he is he taken away Eve from her and forced her away. So now Suki is once again trapped in a marriage with a person who she is terrified with. And also that he knew that she didn't actually kill Ranveer, which is obviously another very traumatic thing that fucked her up for life. And also that in itself, him not allowing their son Kirat to be released from jail, having known the actual truth, rather protecting himself and his son, rather than Suki and Suki's interests. And obviously Nish has, uh, has pretty much fucked with everybody else in the six with a lot of his actions uh is obviously conned rocky and kathy out of the bridge street cafe um has been like has now made eve disappear which affects stacy and has also been like just completely fucking with stacy and the slate is the whole year denise hey he hasn't done anything super bad with but that's mostly with ravi who he does protect and has protected from Denise's accusations of him killing Ranveer. Um, Sharon, obviously they were gonna, he was gonna buy the gym, um, but they, she, he, he double crossed them. Um, Linda, he obviously broke into the pub after, and like smashed it all up after the not being able to buy the pub. And, oh, there's one more, or oh, there's one other person, maybe, who I haven't said. But, you know, you get the point. Nish has done something to all of these women. And that is why he's probably suspect number two for me, personally. Uh, yeah, I'm Dan. And uh, Dan is on a jockey one. We've already mentioned him. But, Malcolm, so <laughs> picture it. It's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. What's the, what's the horror movie you like with the uh, I Know What You Did Last Christmas? The, 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 the song from it? Where? The fucking uh, the, the the one Christmas song that sounds like a horror, like it's going to be in a horror film with the bells. Oh, what tubular bells? Yeah, the tubular bells are playing and fucking. I know what you did. I know what you did last Christmas, Keanu. So picture this: we're in the Queen's Bed. Oh, the. Oh, that sounds like yeah, you're, you're going to get so fucking we're, so we're crashed in into it. by multiple nuns. Just so. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're so we're in the Queen Vic. It's Christmas Day. Now Malcolm's not the body on the floor, but he, but but he's the killer to me. He's the killer. He walks in. He walks in with a knife. George doesn't let him in. He sh He punches George. The show how strong he is. Bosses Phil for no reason because he's bald. And he has better hair than him. He walks over to her. He walks over to Keanu. The tubular bells start playing. They start playing. We're going to get a foot on fight. You don't bring a fist to a knife fight. I tell you that boy. And Keanu swings for him. As the bells get louder and louder. As the bells start ringing louder and louder. And then he starts punching Malcolm. He starts punching him. Malcolm's on the floor. Malcolm's on the floor. So this is where you either have one or two options. Keanu fucking... Batters his head into the floor and kills him. Or this is where we get the. This is where you do the most stupidest thing I can think of. Keanu, in the heat of the moment, punches him. You know what? Do you know what fucking Malcolm does? He grabs him by the the fucking Mac nuts and he fucking stabs them. And then he stabs him in the stomach. And then stabs him. So he stabs him in the bollocks and then stabs him in the stomach and fucking stabs him as the tubular bells are ringing and he's just stabbing him. And he's getting revenge for making him be a kidnapper. As Sharon goes, he's dead. And then Malcolm runs off into the night like Batman. Jumps yeah. off a roof. Maybe does some parkour. And then runs off into the night. You're Never to be seen again. You. You're having a fucking meltdown. <laughs> Could you imagine that's how they ended it? <laughs> Jesus, that would be something and a half. One thing that I wanted to... I don't, I, it was going to be an original video, but one thing that would be interesting to tack on just because oh, my five oh, that's fine. um <laughs> one pound um one thing that's been interesting to see do you think that a lot of the 
this is going to sound like a really polarizing point. I'm not trying to make a point of... I'll just say it and then I'll explain it away. Do you think that all of the men who are suspected to be victims, in their, in their minds, do you think they think they are reasonable for doing this stuff? Depends on the person. Like, uh, like uh, in... I believe that in Dean's head, Dean believes he is a victim and he has to prove to everybody that he is a victim. See, like, I will explain it like this. All our victims do think that because Nish thinks that Sucky loves him. Even though we all know Sucky yeah, doesn't. Nish, Nish, so he Nish thinks think- that he's been betrayed and yeah, Eve but he has is the taken her away. You know? And Theo How believes dare. that... How dare. Yeah. Theo he's believes fucking, that Stacy loves her and, you know, that they're going to be together. So I'm sure in his brain, he believes that Stacy's Stacey's misled me. She's been lying to me. Um, like, I do Rocky. think it's been interesting to think that because when you pose something like this, she is going to be like hating it, like hitting back at the men who have hurt us. You know, some people might groan and be like, ah, but, you know, it's just going to be attacking men. But in this sense, I do genuinely think that a lot of the men feel like they're in the right in these situations. They aren't. (laughs) They aren't in these situations. They aren't right. None of them are right. But in their brain, I do think that they feel justified in the actions they're doing. Um, which is it's, just an interesting it's be- because it's not. Oh, sorry, I just, just I'll just wrap this. But it's because it's okay, like sorry. they believe that they have good reason for doing this stuff. It's not right, you know. We know that it's not right, but it's made something that could have been as like, yeah, fuck you, men, you're all shit. Which you know, some fucking incels are gonna be upset about. Um, but it's given more reason to... It's it's more nuanced than what people may have initially thought it could have been. There we are. Um, I do believe that all the victims do think that... Or all, yeah, all the victims that, are, that we think are the victims think they are the victim in this situation. Because Keanu, um, even on Christmas Day, is going to be completely different because we all know Sharon's going to expose the secret that she knew and that he's not the father. Yes. Um. Which I wanted to be like Jerry Springer, where it's like Keanu, you are not the father. Yeah, yeah. Bosh, straight to Sharon, just fucking bosh. Yeah, <laughs> fucking runs out of the but church, yeah, like, starts stripping. <laughs> also, yeah, Rocky, you know, feeling like he was put into a corner, he couldn't do anything, so he he had to set the cafe on fire. But it's not his fault; it's Nish's fault that he had to do this. When obviously he's not going to take responsibility for gambling away all the money. Keanu obviously not being Albie's dad, that being the secret that Sharon's kept from him, where she, he's doing this because he's desperate to keep his son in the country. Like, it's just, it's been an interesting way to... It's been an interesting way to kind of give a bit more nuance to these situations. But obviously, just for 100% clarity... You know, I don't believe any of the people who are going to be all of the men who are possible victims in this death are gonna be redeemed or redeemable. A lot of them have done absolutely heinous shit in a way to get what they believe is what they deserve. Um, but it's I still mean, it's I been mean, an interesting way to write how it's become more three dimensional than just fuck you men. You know, it's been it's been very well done to give reason as to why these men would be doing these actions. I mean, uh, what I will say is don't look at it as a TV show when you watch this. I mean, these scenes come on with, like, Dean and Linda, uh, Rocky and Kathy, uh, Nish and Sucky. You look at this like this is a family member, something to a family member that, that you care about, let's be honest, that you care about. No one gives a shit about Dave, you're... 37 cousin who's related to you because his dog had sex with a with a fucking chihuahua when when you were before you were born and he's somehow related to you now. Um, 
But imagine this is like your family's going through this in real life. Obviously, the men you hurt will will think they are being hurt by the women, when in when in turn it's the men who've hurt the women. And um, that might sound a bit convoluted, but basically, it makes sense. basically, what I mean is, man, men think women ba- are bad. They, <laughs> they, 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 they bad. Women think men bad because they did bad thing. So just think of it like that. Um, this is not about. This is not a fucking culture war. But this is making men look weak. Men have always been pictured as you want to be a strong man. Well, maybe do twenty push-ups a day. You want to be a strong man. Don't open about your feelings. You want to be a strong man. Like we've been fucking. We the men have been dominating this fucking scene for years. It's time for the woman to get a the the, the woman to get a a bit a bit of a shot, but. It, it, it's it's it, they do all think they're victims in this the men yes, do yes. but that that to answer your question like that yes but if you want if you want a dumb answer for the people in the comments who are still confused men think women bad women think men bad because they did did bad thing but yeah I uh, it's going to be exciting I'm definitely going to be thrilled for it because it's Christmas and the be- it's going to probably be one of the best Christmas episodes. Unless it somehow revealed that fucking Keanu, or not Keanu, fucking Shrimpy's the body on the floor. <laughs> like. Yeah, there's a chance for it to go dramatically wrong if they choose the wrong victim in a lot of people's eyes. Now, yes, there's been a very split discourse where you can tell they've been doing a good job because there are so many possible suspects. So... It's hard to really nail down who the actual one will be, but I kind of implore the team to s- just strongly commit to whoever they are going to be. I still personally think it should be Dean, with everything they built to, what this year's been about, how it's continued through. I still personally believe it will be Dean. Um, but there could also be other victims in the same scenario. Like, I still wouldn't be surprised if a second person dies. Or at least gets arrested, or is you know another like another one of these series of men who have been hurting the woman. I wouldn't be surprised if 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 one dies, one goes to prison, for example. Like I feel like that there will be multiple satisfying conclusions to these stories at Christmas, because yes, a lot of the story isn't done yet. And it will bleed a lot into next year and probably even into the next anniversary. Um, like beyond that in like twenty twenty five. Um But it'll just be I don't know. It's just uh it has the chance to end the golden age if they do this well. And that's honestly the most interesting point of this. Besides the actual interesting who done it, and I mean considering the amount of who done it's that have been done lately. Well, EastEnders is still probably going to come out first place because it's still been the most intriguing one that hasn't gotten boring yet. Um, But there we are. Those are our theories, sister. Who are the Christmas dead body victims, the people who die in the 2023 Christmas episode, the flash forward, whatever you want to fucking call it. Tell us who you think dies at Christmas in the comment section down below. And make sure to give us all your feedback and tell us what you think. And maybe we can do another one in a bit's time where we can just go through what you guys think because people seem to enjoy that kind of stuff. But as a whole, thank you for watching. I've been Ash from Watching Walford. I've been joined by Piggy. Yeah, um, have a festive holiday, my fellow watchers. Um, enjoy, enjoy this while you can. Uh, because we all know the, the rocket's going to run for a certain amount of time. And then the rocket's just going to fucking break fuel and slowly crash into Earth. And you think it's an alien, but it's too... It's an English bloke and an Irish bloke fucking <laughs> stepping out. And it's like, it, it's been a long road. Been a long, long road and I'm just getting started. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can follow us on. Um, you can follow Ash's social medias. Uh, Aqua Dreams on YouTube and Twitch. You can follow uh, his Twitter at Real Aqua Dreams. Yeah. Um, you can follow One More Match One A Two on YouTube. Uh, do you want to do the little tongy thing? No. No. Okay. I'm tired. I'm tired. Um. 
uh, you can also follow uh, our social medias at uh, inst- Instagram, Twitter, slash X, and Twitch at uh, Watching Alder, Watching Walford. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watching Walford, as we will be here on Christmas Day and maybe Christmas Eve, but on Christmas Day and maybe Christmas Eve, doing a live reactions to the episode that has just aired because yes. it's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's and Christmas. everybody needs good neighbours. <laughs> neighbours. Good. Friends. Anyone can fall in love. That's not hard to do. But yes, thank you for watching our Who Dies at Christmas. I think it's the second edition. It's the third one we recorded, but the I think the original never made it up. Um, but yeah, so keep on watching us. Keep on enjoying it's all we ask. And we just want you to take part and, you know, keep engaging with us as it's always lovely to read all your comments. We do have a great time. May not be responding to all of them all the time, as some people do yeah, love to Abdul leave Rahim. About, some people love to leave about thirty comments on one video as Abdul they Rahim. express their their entire their entire stream of consciousness from that thought. But I mean, it's what we wanted to do with a lot of these like content, like ideas. What we wanted to do with these topics that we were going to talk about. We wanted it to be a place where people can go ahead and just say what they fucking think, say what they feel. And that's just what it's here for. But it's been a long one, so we will bid you farewell. Thank you for watching. Watching Wolf, thank you for watching. Who dies at Christmas? Number two, we will be doing one very shortly before Christmas, just to essentially lock in the prediction. Um, and we will, maybe on like the Christmas live stream, Maybe like five minutes before, be like, all right, you have two minutes, convince me who dies at Christmas, and then we fucking go up from there. But regardless, just keep watching this space. We got a lot of stuff coming out that you should enjoy, so thank you once again for being with us. Um, all people, at the start of the year, we start with nothing, and at the end of the year, we are continuing onwards with a growing and loving community that we appreciate so much. So thank you. For joining us, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us through this year. No matter when you got here, you're still here. So we do appreciate you. You're an OG, an old, exactly. an OG, an original gangster. Just remember that. Throw up your gang signs. Um, but as a whole, just want to say thank you for watching, and make sure to follow us in the next one. Have fun. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>